Good morning, everyone. My name is Sydney Watson, and I'm going to go over some of the performance-based strategies. And I'm pretty much going to talk about the performance-based assessment. So what the performance-based assessment does is it accurately measures one or more specific set of standards. So these set of standards can be set by the teachers, it can be set by researchers, it can be set by the school district, and it's kind of what teachers expect students to know at that time. It's based on like the average student, they do it individually, so it's not as comparative. Um, Performance-based assessments are often very authentic, complex, and open-ended. It provides a valid alternative to multiple choice questions. So instead of having your typical standardized testing that has a question and then A, B, C, or D, or sometimes A and B, and it can get super complicated for the child. The performance-based assessment will eliminate this issue because a child is given a task and they are asked to complete it. And they're completing it in a very natural environment and it's very beneficial for the child and it gives very adequate results for the teacher. A performance-based assessment measures the student's ability to apply the skills and knowledge that they've learned throughout their experience in education and development. So this gives them the chance to show what they really know, what they need to work on, what they're, um, what they're capable, capable of, their abilities, things like that. It's, it's a challenge to a child, but it helps them to use their thinking skills to complete a process or an activity. So this challenge will help a child figure out in their mind, if they're given a task, help them figure out in their mind what steps they need to take to complete the said activity. Let me find my spot. Um, sometimes there are several correct answers, which is not very similar to the multiple choice. The multiple choice, you have to either circle A, B, C, D. Sometimes it goes to an E. But there are sometimes, a diff like, children will get to the solution taking a different route each time. Because every child is unique, every child has a different learning style. So each time they're going, one child may be taking this way, another child may be taking this way. And they may be doing it both correct. Um, I found on, I'll put my links below and where I found all of my information in my sites. I've used three different sources. And I found one that helps teachers kind of figure out what the steps that they need to take in the performance-based assessment. And so what I found the first is that they need to identify goals. The teacher needs to identify goals so they can portray this into children. They can have the children know what the goals are. They're going to work toward having this goal met. For example, tying your shoe. That's your end goal. Your goal is to have your shoe tied. You may take some funky steps to get there, but we're going to see if you're capable of tying your shoe by yourself. And that could be a goal, for example. Um, other goals could be kind of similar to maybe when a teacher is trying to figure out themselves or setting their own goals on how to change their teaching strategy to see based on the results of their students, they're going to compare it and figure out how to improve them and send it to the school systems and they can do the same thing. Um, selecting appropriate standards is another step for teachers to take. They need to be age appropriate, they need to be based on the curriculum, they need to be based at the level that they're learning, and each age group will be different. Let's say preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Um, you also need to identify learning gaps. So that kind of goes hand in hand with the first thing that I was saying about identifying goals. And then you can identify the learning gaps to see how curriculum may need to be adjusted, how teaching strategy needs to be adjusted, things of that nature. Designing a scenario, so that could be, for example, tying your shoe. That's the activity that you designed to see what skills a child has. That could look at thinking skills, um, fine motor skills, things of that nature. Okay, also I'm going to talk about types of assessment. So assessment is the process of gathering vital information. So this vital information is used to understand where a child is at developmentally, educationally, socially, emotionally, all these aspects will be determined with assessment. Often assessment also breaks down key components of behavior. 
it's a critical um, assessment is a critical part of an education program. Assessment should be done with all students at all ages. Just different types of assessment may be more appropriate for a specific age. Assessment will also provide a record of growth, behavior, successes, and you can also use this to create a portfolio for a child. Portfolios can be used for future reference along many years. It can continue to get added to, pass on, and a portfolio is a type of assessment. And a portfolio records, it's a record of data through the work of a child over a period of time. So this can be the work ethic of a child, it can be examples of their work, it can be behavior notes, observations from the teachers, from other observers, professionals, anything can be added into this portfolio and it can be passed on through teachers to help understand the child better. Um, observations is another type of assessment. And this provides minimal, it's minimal to no intrusion. These observations are usually direct um, based on one child. So a teacher may pick one child that day to observe or their assistant may observe, jot down information and the child's in their natural setting. So they do not know that they're being observed most of the time. This is very beneficial for the child because they are, they are, they are acting in a normal natural setting instead of knowing that you're being watched or for example with standardized testing know that you're, you're you know that you're being tested you know that you're being compared to others let's see educator ratings um that's another example of an assessment this can assess the child's cognitive and language abilities based on the teacher's um set of checklists that they have checklists will also break down the key milestones expected at that age Informal assessment is like the observations with the, the uh, natural setting. And then you have standardized testings, which is formal assessment and can be very stressful for the child because it's really hard to perform under that type of pressure. Some of the advantages of performance-based assessment. Performance tasks will help to build on any early knowledge. So this is helping children to create a foundation for their performance tasks, for their capabilities, for their abilities, what they know with their process skills and their thinking skills, and these are being enhanced. Uh, like I said earlier, these performance-based assessments will determine capabilities, which is very important for children to understand their strengths versus their weaknesses and how to turn their weaknesses into strengths less stressful and more natural. Children are pretty much playing most of the time. They're like, oh, it's a game as I try and complete this activity. But the teachers are actually watching them and seeing how they're going about it. Because as we all know, children learn best through play. It's easily coordinated. You can easily come up with an activity that will enhance and provide the advantages that come with performance-based assessment. It's very beneficial for the teacher in developing strategy understanding competencies, and I'm running out of time, so I'll just finish with this last thought, is that it's in the natural environment. So the natural environment is so helpful for young kids. It's so natural, which is exactly the words used in that phrase, is it's a natural environment. Children are just performing without the feelings of pressure. They may have a little bit of pressure, they get frustrated over the activity, but overall it's a natural and calm, accepting environment. And that is a few of the advantages of performance-based assessment and a breakdown of overall assessment. I'll put my links below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.